Welcome back. In Wisconsin, our workforce is lagging, and fewer people are going to college in Wisconsin to replenish it. Yet a new report from the Wisconsin Policy Forum this week also shows the public money helping send students to college isn't keeping pace with either inflation or national averages. That could set up a crucial gap in our workforce pipeline. Joining me to talk about it is Jason Stein from the Forum and the researcher behind this report, also joined by UW Parkside Dr. Debbie Ford, Chancellor of UW uh, Parkside Campus, Thank you both so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Looking Absolutely. forward to our conversation. Me too. Let's start with you, Jason. Researching this, and you've done a number of research reports similar to this, looking at enrollment in Wisconsin and now looking at public state federal aid, what surprised you the most? Well, I mean, to some degree, we knew these trends were out here, and that's what what led us to do the report. But I think one question I had in my mind was, we do have declining enrollment. So you have declining enrollment, you don't necessarily need as much financial aid as you needed before. But what we found is even accounting for that, there was still an issue here, and an issue that may be to some degree contributing to declining enrollment if students have unmet need that's preventing them from enrolling in college in the first place or staying in college once they get there. And just really quickly, what do you think are the most important or top line data findings from this report? I mean, I think one that, that state financial aid has been relatively stagnant, that average awards in the Wisconsin grants for the tech colleges and UW system are down a little bit over the past 10 years, uh, that unmet need is on the rise. And if you take the main state grant, the Wisconsin grant, you add in the average Pell grant um, for both tech college and, and private college and UW college students, the buying power has eroded over time. So it's just covering less of tuition than it used to cover. What's your reaction reading this? Well, first of all, thank you to the pub Policy Forum for preparing this report and bringing more attention to the need for additional financial aid uh, from the state to support our students. And one of the things that we believe is that we need more graduates. Our employer partners across our state, particularly in Southeast Wisconsin, they are telling us they need ready talent for the workforce. And we believe education is but one of those keys. And uh, I really wasn't surprised by the findings, but what I hope is, is that we can work together to find solutions and and to really amplify more opportunities for our students, and particularly those students who are sitting on the sidelines that want to engage in higher education. Because this impacts disproportionately, as I understand it, reading this report, lower income people, students of minority students, populations like that. Are you seeing that in the UW system? Absolutely. And we're seeing that not only in the UW system, tech colleges, our private college and university partners, but at UW Parkside, we have the highest percentage of students of color. And we know how important uh, and how much our students rely on not only federal aid, which has increased thanks to the Pell Grant, um, public, or excuse me, private support through scholarships. All of the campuses are doing their part to work with business partners and philanthropic partners to increase the number of scholarships. And I hope that we can gain some increases from the state so that we have a, I would say, a more robust formula because it's going to take all of us. One thing I want to ask about particularly, so the bulk of, the st uh, bulk of state aid in Wisconsin comes to the Wisconsin Grant Program, as you explained in your report, and it basically doubled between 2000 and roughly 2010, 2011, and then it just kind of hits this plateau. Should we be drawing any conclusions or parallels over the fact that that was also when enrollment started dropping in Wisconsin? Well, I mean, obviously we've had declining birth rates and we, you know, older population. And so some of that was, was always, going, that enrollment decline was, was always going to happen. Um, but we're not just seeing a decline in the number of students completing high school. We're also seeing declining enrollment rates in post-secondary education for those students that are completing high school. And so I think to me, that is the problem to look at and to focus on is, you know, to try and say, okay, we, we, we don't have as many college, you know, high school graduates as we used to have, but of the ones that we do have, how can we make sure that they're getting the best skills possible so that they can, you know, meet the workforce needs that the Chancellor was, was talking about. Obviously, there, there may, I think there's a lot of things happening there and it's not just financial aid, but it's certainly a tool that we know from the research can help students to enroll at higher rates and then, you know, stay in school at higher rates once they get there. Is the state legislature realistically the most impactful solution here, them unlocking more funds for state aid? 
Yeah, I mean, well, as a state, for, for a number of years, our, I think our main uh, college affordability strategy has been the, the tuition freeze on UW system schools. And, you know, in some ways, you know, I think that has had some effect on holding down tuition. At the same time, uh, the tuition freeze it doesn't apply to the tech colleges, doesn't apply to the private colleges and universities. And, and obviously, it it affects students across the board. So the students who are at the lower end, who are maybe in most need, and who maybe even with tuition frozen may have challenges uh, attending higher education, it's not necessarily targeting those students. And then lastly, it seems as if it may lapse here in the coming years. And in that case, I think that would even put you know, potentially more focus on financial aid. It is an excellent return on investment for our state legislature uh, to be able to invest the funds that we have available here in the state of Wisconsin in the future. And those are our students. Um, we get them ready uh, through the skills and knowledge. And then we're able to meet the demands that our employer partners are saying um, that they need. So it's, it's the long game, um, but it's the best investment short term. The report mentions this. Wisconsin is 28th in the country for per pupil student aid. What is the bottom line consequences if we don't address this issue? Granted, this is not the only factor impacting things like enrollment, as we've talked about impacting things like the workforce, but ultimately, what are the consequences that we're looking at? We need nurses, we need programmers, we need engineers, we need these workers in our economy. And if we don't have them, we're going to be you know, less productive, you know, in some ways potentially even less healthy as a society. And so, you know, again, the financial aid is one way to get there. If it's done correctly, I think there's a decent chance that it, you know, you can use it to boost long-term earnings, long-term tax revenue for the state, and that it ultimately can, can pay for itself or at least get into that ballpark. So it's not, it's something that is not merely an act of charity on the part of the state to do. I think it's also something that has a return for the taxpayers and a return for the broader public. And I would say we are in a knowledge economy. And so even for our students as they finish their degrees, there's a commitment to long, uh, lifelong learning. So what are the downsides? Downstream, we're not gonna be as competitive as a state. Downstream, we're not gonna be able to provide the talent that our employers are saying that they need and want. 10 years ago, this would have been a difficult, you know, some, some of these investments might have been difficult to make. The state is in a position, uh, there's a surplus, the tax revenues have been strong. So, you know, obviously the state can't do every priority, can't do every commitment, but this is one with a relatively high return and one that uh, policymakers could consider. All right, Dr. Ford, Jason Stein, thanks so much for joining the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We will be right back.